Welcome back everybody to another episode of Minecraft Pocket Edition. Today I thought I'd start this episode off today guys by going into the creative world and show you the design that I'm planning to do for the water wheel. Now this is my creative world guys and you'd be surprised at how many things I've actually done in here. Just kind of gone off to the side here so that you can't see very much because uh, a lot of it's kind of spoilers for stuff which I don't really want to see, show you guys but Here's the design for the water wheel. It's nice and compact and uh, it fits nice and well onto the edge of the building which I just recreated here just to see what it would look like and there's random trees here anyway. But this is the design for it. So basically what it does is it follows a natural circle uh, of, I think it's a 5x5 five five circle like cut off the corners and then basically it's just got slabs uh, every other block going down on either side with some signs on just to cover it up and it goes the same on the underside but there isn't any signs down there that's basically how it's going to work so uh, we're going to hop on over into the survival now and we will get to building it on the edge of our little hut base whatever you would like to call it so yeah guys let's head over there right now uh, we don't want to go here obviously we want to go into the LP so here we are guys, and uh, let's get ourselves some stuff together to build this thing. So we're going to need quite a lot of wood. So once again, let's collect ourselves some wood. We're going to also need some stairs. Um, we also probably might as well just take the lot of this, because it uh, doesn't matter anyway. And I'm running low on wood again now, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of wood farming to keep it going. Because I'm probably going to have to need all this wood today, because of the amount of signs that I'm going to have to make. Because uh, there's a lot of signs involved in this build, so... As many as I've got, I'm going to use and things like that. The middle requires one black wool. Uh, actually, I'm going to need two black wool just for the post that comes out along the side. Uh, anything else that I'm going to need from in here? Uh, I might need a water bucket or two. So I'll take them just in case. And now this is the point where we've got to collect our equipment. So diamond gear. Um, that's about it, to be honest. And, and an axe, actually. We may need an axe. Uh, a bow. Then uh, some arrows, maybe. And that's about it. Food, this is the food chest, guys. I've been collecting eggs like a madman, and I've now got just under a stack and a quarter. That's very, very good, and uh, a lot of other things are in there as well. And I'm kind of sorting, filtering through the things, trying to think of things that I can do. Now, I have come up with a little plan to do in the world in a later stage. But first, let's just sort our inventory out. So we want that, 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 that. There we go. <coughs> So yeah, basically, I've come up with an idea that we can use a lot of our blocks on. It'll be a, it'll be a, a very, very big project um, because it'll require uh, a little bit of water mechanics, a little bit of building creatively, and it'll, re it'll be pretty cool when it's finished. So basically, the plan is to build a small arena. And uh, let me just show you this now, guys. If you haven't noticed it already, look at what I'm holding in my hand and look at what's at the side of my body. Clearly, I'm highlighting the diamond sword, but it clearly shows a diamond pickaxe in my hand. Look, let me even show you that in first person. Uh, third person, sorry. So look, there's the pickaxe. There's the sword. Pickaxe, sword. Pickaxe, sword. Pickaxe, sword. Notice there isn't any changes in that. It's kind of a bit of a funny thing that actually happens. It's very, very weird. So we'll spit that out, we'll pick it back up again, and that doesn't fix it. Yeah, it's a little bit of a bug, but it should be fixed in 0.8, and I have heard it is fixed, so no needs to worry there. So let's get right on to building this water wheel on the edge here. So we're going to have to start plotting this out, so let's get our black wool first of all, and let's get that placed one, two, like that, so it gets it building out against the edge of the roof. That's exactly where it's supposed to be. So uh, let's also, we need the, um, the wood vent immediately. So this thing is actually only 5x5, five five, technically, but the full thing looks slightly different because it's not. So first of all, what you want to do is you want to build two on either side like this. And then you want to go two below. One, two, and you also want to go two above. Now, we're going to try and jump that, and I don't think I'll be able to. No, so let's just get on there via this, this little platforming area here. And I'm reckoning that I won't be able to make that jump. So we've got to go round now and uh, we'll swim round to try and get on it. So let's just, uh, we'll put a block down somewhere. And I think probably best of all is to put it 
there so we can get up and down so it's not be that bad and i also need to do the two like here it's right against it which is it i like the idea of it being right against it some others might not like it but in the creative build it isn't right against it but when i was building that i kind of thought wouldn't it look better if it actually was right against it and now this is the point where we've got to put the um these sort of wheel cogs onto this uh like this little thing here and uh, basically what we do is we go around, and this is quite an easy thing to do, so first one goes right against this like so, and then the second one goes there like that, and uh, then the next one, same on the other side, but basically this is the point where you have to rotate it, and we fell in, so that's never clever. So basically what I want to do is um, I'm trying to set this up so it looks like the wheel, and then we can start, start to build more of the complicated stuff on it. So now we want to go right against here like so, and we also want to go right there like this. So then we go around to the other side, guys, and we go one here, and we also go one here, and there we go. So now that's the basic shape of the wheel done, and it's also going to be night time, so let's just sleep to remove the darkness. So this is the point where it gets slightly awkward, because now we're going to need to put slabs and signs on this thing. So which means I'm going to have to make a lot of signs. And first of all, we were going to add the slabs on, so let's make it a 12 or so slabs. I think that should be enough. I think it's about three aside anyway. So we get the 12 slabs. And we need to get on the roof of it now. So we'll go up along the side here. We can always break this away again when we're done. So we go up here. The first slab goes right here, like so. And the same on this side. So basically it's a mirror image of each other. The next one goes here, like so. Now, this is the bit where it may look a bit tricky because it'll look like some of the water will be able to flow onto the roof of the building. It's not too much of a problem, but I may eventually move it so it fits a little bit better with it. But from this side, you can't really tell anyway, and that's kind of the plan. So the next one you want to place right there. That's the plan. And then the next one goes here, and we go underneath. And the next one goes... Um, I'm trying to think now. Where does it go? I think it goes there. Uh, let's swim up before we drown, uh, like so. And then we're going to get on the underside again. We go... One, two, three. Oh, in the wrong place, that one. I wasn't meaning to, uh, intending to place that one there, but it happened the way it went. So uh, now I've got to go here, and the two left go on this far edge here. So we've got ready, one, I'm trying to keep it stable so I can place the block uh, there, and there there we go so all those are ones are on and the reason i've jammed it up right against the house is for one reason only is the fact that space may be an issue when it's done so the next thing we want to do is we want to get rid of our horrible horrible pillar so we can keep using this one two now we're going to have to make a ton of signs. Now the good thing about it being against the building is the fact that you have to use less signs. Now each of the posts uh, above the water in fact needs two signs uh, or three. So if there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and two of them don't need signs. So that's eight, 22 signs we're going to need which is a lot of wood. 22 signs means we need 22 sticks. And we also need a ton of wood. Uh, I don't actually know how much I'm going to get out of this. So let's try and get 20 signs from this. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Yeah, that should be loads. Right, hang on, that says 16. Oh yeah, it's because the stack of signs is only at uh, 16. That makes sense. So uh, let's go back round to our pillar again. And we want to just start placing signs like a madman. Now, this is a pretty simple build, to be honest. And uh, it won't take people very long to build. Which is a very, very good thing. And so we'll start off by placing signs around the edge of these top posts right here. And we want to go on this edge here. And you also want to go same on the other side. The top top two need a barriers like three, like so. This is the pattern that most of them have. So they have this sort of uh, nice little style to each one. And then these ones go one and fall in. No, that's wrong, obviously, because it clearly wasn't meant to fall in. But... Uh, we got it in the right place, that's good. I'm sure we'll be able to do this one from here though, because uh, this one's quite a simple one to do, because we just lean against the house roof. Or we can get that one on there. That one there, and that one's got a Z on it. Uh, let's break that one there. Let's pick that one up, and we can swim up now, if we can get out of this horrible little bit of a whirlpool that's going on. 
There we go. Two more on this side. One, two. No, don't want to press the pause button. Two, like so. It's very, very tricky to play science with split controls on when you physically can't actually touch them. Like so, I've got like a split second to hit the screen like that. There we go. So now we've got half of it done. So now we want to switch to the other side, which has already got the top one done for us, which is very useful. No, we don't want to place it there. So get the axe out and we want to chop. There we go, that sign away. It's very, very tricky to get a pinpoint accurate thing going. There we go. You just got to be careful and try not to be bobbing up and down through the water all the time. That's the kind of the trick to this. And there we go again. And now the final side with the last three. So we want to hop back up onto here so we can see. And we can get to that there. This one right here. And the last one right there. Now the signs kind of hold it back to make it look like buckets. Uh, so if you have a look from it here, and uh, the final thing we need to do to make it reveal itself is to break away the uh, the little podium post we've got going here. But with the we don't want to break the last one, that's what I was saying. Uh, we don't want to break the last one for a reason because it will cause water streams to break and flow. But if we do, we did like we did then. We placed one underneath it as well. It stops the water from screwing itself up and flowing stupidly. And uh, we're going to take a look back from over here. We'll have a look at our water, water wheel, mill, whatever you want to call it. I call it a wheel, to be honest, but that's about everything else as well. And uh, please ignore any sounds that you can hear that are outside because there's just very loud noises going on lately today. So there's, there's what it looks like from all the sides. It kind of looks quite small and compact. Yeah, it makes a nice effect of a water wheel. Now, water wheels, it kind of gives a nice medieval steampunky style look to things. I kind of like that, so if see if we can shoot through it. Let's see if we can have a bit of target practice while we're here. And we're going to try and shoot through um, the windows. Let's try and hit each slot once. One. Oh, we can't hit with the arrows. Here we go again. Number two. And shoot. And that should be about it, actually, because I can't hit the underneath ones. I also replaced the dirt underneath the house with... Um, Let's go in between the gap, actually, the gap that we've got. Let's go in the gap and collect our arrows. And that kind of, that black um, wool looks like a, um, a cog or some sort of piston wheel, uh, which would actually be rotating with a wheel or a windmill or a water wheel, for example, which is the one we've built. Also, I've been looking at where that path up there to the, um, to the mob farm would come out. And actually, it comes out, the middle of the mob farm path would be here, but a wall goes there, and a wall is there. That's how close it is. So I might have to bend that round a bit and do a bit of a curvy path from that to bring it over to here. But that's all I really wanted to do with the dock today. I wanted to finish the docks off by adding the water wheel to it. So now they're pretty much done now, and all we need to do is add a, a wheel, uh, not a wheel, but the ships into the docks, and then that area will be pretty much done. But talking about a massive project that I want to be doing it over the next... A long long time to be honest it's basically I'm going to explain it to you now guys when we get in inside excuse me we're going to explain it now when we get inside and then I'm going to go and show you the location of where I'm going to put it so basically as first of all we're just going to go back and we're going to get rid of our stuff so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be building an arena which I've already said now the arena it's because it's a single player it's going to seem a bit odd because it's going to be an arena but if you think about it we could use it and uh, we could have mob farms coming off the sides of it, just little platforms that will occasionally spawn a mob and then we could bring them into little chambers and then maybe we could um, have an area where I could, we could test uh, PvE skills, player versus enemies or mobs and uh, basically that the kind of key to that is is trying to control the mob spawns. I'm making a pretty cool design for an arena. The arena, I want to make it a fairly large size. Large enough so that I can have between about um, half a quarter, uh, um, 16 and 32 mobs in there at once uh, and also enough that I can fill the floor with obsidian and not have any problems with that either. So let's uh, whiz back out here guys and uh, let's head over to the destination site where we're going to have it. So uh, I'm going to show you it in the night because that's what most of it will be like when the mobs are here. So another thing that I was doing uh, between last episode and this episode, I went up into the mob farm, into the um, 
the nether reactor area and as you can notice there is now a gaping hole in the bottom corner over there that's because well when I was trying to break some nether brack, uh, nether rack, yes, sorry, nether rack away. We're going to show up, show you guys up here now. You ready? Three, two, one. Crazy, go. And turn round. So this is what it's like normally all the time. So basically, it just has a ton of mobs up here. And I actually enjoy being up here and fighting these mobs. Is this skeleton really going to stand there and kill himself? Wow. Oh wow. So yeah, basically I, I enjoy fighting the mobs that are up here, coming up there occasionally, drawing them out and then killing them. Uh, I actually do enjoy doing that, that's what's given me the idea to do the arena. Uh, because the arena will be a nice addition, it will combine creative building, like block mixturing up and all these other cool stuff. And we'll be able to do different terrains in it. So basically what I'll be planning to do is build the arena large enough so that it has an arena space in it but rather we can change it up so that we can build different arenas inside the actual arena itself now the large space i've got in the world uh, the ma the majority large space actually is over in this direction now i haven't got many of my builds over in this direction guys and uh, that's kind of the thing here um, that we don't actually have any builds in this direction so i want to try and change that up a bit i want to change this area to become uh, the mob farm uh, new mob farm not really it's not really a mob farm but it kind of is because i will be getting some stuff from it but it'll also be practicing skills with bows swords, uh, everything else, but the plan is to build it in this area here in front of us, so we will strip the trees back, get it pretty much right in the corner of uh, the world, or near enough right against the edge of the world at some area, and so basically that's where it's going to be guys, and I'm sorry for the shorter episode, but um, I haven't really had much plan for this one, inside to just build the water wheel, so for next episode we're going to start gathering some resources and we will begin on planning the arena. So yeah guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode as always. Comment, like, rate and subscribe and I will see you all next time. Bye bye!